The Truth About the Sexuality of Pope Alexander VI Get ready to uncover the most shocking truth about one of the most corrupt popes in history. This is not your average religious figure. He's known for his lavish lifestyle, scandalous affairs, and a trail of corruption that would make even the most seasoned politician blush. In this video, we are going to dive deep into his controversial life and reveal everything you need to know. If you're ready to satisfy your curiosity and discover the truth, then this is a video you can't afford to miss. So buckle up and get ready for a wild ride. Let's begin! Rodrigo Borgia's Perilous Road to the Papacy Rodrigo Borgia was born in the Spanish town of Chativa near Valencia around 1431. The notorious Borgias were Spanish lords who rose to power and fortune in Spain and across the Italian peninsula during the Renaissance by obtaining high-ranking civil and religious jobs. Rodrigo's uncle, Alfonso de Borgia, was appointed Pope Calicius III in 1455, propelling the family to even higher heights. Pope Calicius III promoted his family to places in the church, including two of his nephews, and that includes 25-year-old Rodrigo Borgia to the Cardinalette. He named the future Pope Alexander VI as Vice-Chancellor of the Holy See, now commonly known as the Vatican a year later. He was characterized as tall and attractive as a young cardinal with great aptitude in money things, and he allegedly indulged in bribery, nepotism, and wild orgies. Pope Pius II, who succeeded Alexander VI's uncle as Pope in 1458, had a friendly connection with Rodrigo Borgia, uh, cautioned him about his sex parties, calling them unseemly. It was unusual for high-ranking clergymen to have mistresses back then. Rodrigo Borgia had two notable mistresses, Vanazza del Catanai and Giulia Farnese, both of whom were married to noblemen. Borgia, on the other hand, sparked controversy by publicly admitting that he fathered seven children between them, and historians think he had further illegitimate offspring whose identities have since been lost to history. But Rodrigo Borgia's scandalous love life did not prevent him from becoming Pope Alexander VI, and his sins only became worse from there. Pope Alexander VI's Scandalous Reign when Pope Innocent VIII died in 1492, it ignited a power struggle among papal aspirants. Rodrigo Borgia, at 61, succeeded in bribing a majority of cardinals for their votes and was crowned Pope Alexander VI within a few months after Pope Innocent VIII's death. Now in power, Pope Alexander VI used his clout to expand the Borgia family's power and fortune, as well as his own. He named 10 of his relatives to the College of Cardinals, including his 18-year-old son Caesar and his mistress's younger brother, Alessandro Farnese, who subsequently became Pope. Furthermore, Pope Alexander VI bestowed fiefdoms on his closest associates throughout the Papal States and often engaged in samami, the sin of selling church posts. Meanwhile, he lived a luxury lifestyle replete with costly rituals unworthy of the church's leader. In 1500, he notably declared the year a holy year of jubilee and prepared a lavish feast to commemorate the event. The next year, Francis had the most notorious papal party in history. Pope Alexander VI and his son Caesar hosted the Banquet of Chestnuts on October 30, 1501 in the Apostolic Palace, the Pope's official home. It was supposedly an all-night orgy in which the Pope, his son, and others in their inner circle enjoyed the services of 50 prostitutes at the same time, and it turned into a competition. Modern Vatican historians debate whether this crazy party ever happened, but it remains part of the Borgia legend. Johann Burchard, the papal master of ceremonies, left behind the sole description of the Pope's scandalous supper. Ultimately, evenings like these engulfed Pope Alexander VI's tenure, which ended less than two years after the supper, in controversy, further tarnishing the already infamous image of the whole Borgia family. The Inside Story of the Corrupt Borgia Family the scandalous Borgias were not limited to Pope Alexander VI. Caesar and Lucretia were by far the most notorious of his offspring. Caesar Borgia took part in multiple military victories throughout Italy after quitting as his father's cardinal in 1498, the first person in history to do so. His father made another relationship when he married the family of French King Louis XII. Caesar anticipated that by marrying, he would get French backing for his aspirations to retake control of the Papal States and maybe establish a new Borgia kingdom in Italy for Caesar to govern over himself. 
Caesar commanded the Papal Army and French soldiers in a four-year war to do precisely that in 1499. Caesar preferred clever sneak assaults in warfare and was cruel even against his people. Tired of serving Caesar, a few of his commanders mounted a mutiny in 1502. Caesar, unfazed, utilized papal money to replace them with mercenaries, then sent word that he wished to meet with them to reconcile. He killed his previous loyal officers at the conference. Caesar's thirst for power and never-ending schemes drew the adoration of Italian diplomat and writer Nicola Machiavelli. Machiavelli's best-known book, The Prince, was inspired by Caesar's cunning and unabashed ambition. Caesar, known for his passion for slaughter, was widely suspected of murdering his brother Giovanni, but some historians now think Giovanni was murdered by a jealous lover. Caesar's aspirations of becoming an Italian prince were dashed when his father died in 1503, leaving him without papal support to carry on his goals. Meanwhile, Lucrezia Borgia was said to be a cunning vixen who relished poisoning her foes. Though historians have not been able to authenticate any of Lucrezia's purported poisonings, it is known that the Borgia's foes had a reputation for disappearing abruptly and unexpectedly. During her lifetime, stories circulated that the Pope's daughter wore a ring with a hidden chamber carrying different poisons, allowing her to murder at any moment. Lucrezia's intimate connection with her father, as well as her habit of stepping in for him when he was unable to attend to papal matters, provided her with easy access to his enemy's food and wine. Lucrezia, like her brother, was married off to form political relationships. Lucrezia, on the other hand, went through three separate planned marriages, unlike her brother. She married the Lord of Pizarro, Giovanni Sforza, when she was 13 years old, but the marriage did not endure long. Alexander quickly canceled the marriage once Sforza was no longer seen as a crucial political link to Milan's authorities. The annulment was granted on the questionable grounds that Sforza was impotent and unable to complete his four-year marriage to Lucrezia. Lucrezia is said to have been pregnant at the time of the annulment. A kind of uncertain paternity was born into the Borgia family months after her first marriage ended. Alexander produced two papal bulls, claiming the kid as Caesar's son, then as his own son. Lucrezia was accused of having the child with a stable boy named Pedro Calderon, who was later found dead near the family estate's river. Lucrezia's ex-husband accused the Pope's daughter of having relationships with her father and brother throughout their marriage. In 1500, her second husband, Alfonso of Aragon, the illegitimate son of the King of Naples, was assassinated by unknown assailants, but many assumed Lucrezia's father and elder brother Caesar were behind the assassination since he had allied himself with France against Italy. So why were Pope Alexander VI and the Borgias more reviled than their contemporaries? Experts feel that their status as Spanish foreigners added to their notoriety. Pope Alexander VI died in 1503 as a result of a strange sickness that caused his body to swell and discolor. His death occurred a few days after a meal with Cardinal Adriano Castellesi, who was allegedly the target of Caesar's poisoning plot. Many people believe that the Pope's son accidentally poisoned his father rather than Castellesi. Other historians, on the other hand, believe the Pope died of malaria. Let us know in the comment box what's your opinion about him, and like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.